Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Petro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Space Helmet by Philips. Um, this Space Helmet I picked up locally in my town um, from an old friend of mine. Um, it wasn't over expensive, but it's got a flat line across there. Um, so I stripped it and had a look at this to see whether I could find anything wrong with it. Um, I'm not really into televisions too much. I do know the dangers of going into CRT TVs. Um, so you do need to ground um, the lead that goes to the, to the tube. Slip my mind what to call it in the moment. Um, but yeah, um, so this has been stripped down for quite a while. Um, so I'll put it back together at the moment until I can find some parts and more time to look at that. But in the meantime, I saw on Facebook somebody else offering another one of these um, and he said it was working. Now, when I phoned him to go pick it up, he said, I'm really, really sorry, I can't sell you it. It doesn't work at all, period. Well, I said, you know, it doesn't matter. It'll do for spares. It'll be really, really handy to have some parts um, for this one because this one is missing one of the caps on the end here so that the the, the, the screen jumps off when you put it down. That's how it looks when you put the helmet down. It does look really good uh, later on in the video. I'll, sh I'll show you that. also come with the remote. Now the remote's very 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 rare to find these because they always get lost. Unfortunately the back cover um, has lost its tag to hold on with. Um, this cover does slide up to cover up this part but at the moment I've just taped it a bit down and, and clipped that back over it down there at the time being um, just so we've got usage from the remote control until I can find a back or repair um, the back somehow. I got this TV, it's been sat with me for quite a while um, I haven't got round to it, I've got lots and lots of projects on the go. I've got a little 1402 monitor that goes with the Commodore PC. We've got the SX project that we're still going on with. We've got all that storage fine stuff that I've got to be getting it on with. Um, um, I've got VHS players to have a look through. I've got, I've got absolutely loads of stuff to do um, and I'm getting a little bit swamped. And the temperature is a little bit high here in the UK. It's not too bad today, um, but it's very, very humid. Um, it's, just, it's just too warm and humid in the houses. So what I did with this one is um, I stripped it down, popped the back off. I thought, well, right, let's have a look at it and see what I can find. Um, so first of all, I checked the, fu the fuse in the plug, obviously. Um, that was all okay. So I thought my next step is, if it's completely dead, is to check, check continuity in the power cable um, right from the plug, right up to where it connects onto the motherboard. Um, and when I popped the back off, what did I see? Somebody had pulled on the power cable and it had ripped the plug straight out of the motherboard. So all I had to do is put the plug back in and switch it back on. That was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So obviously I've given it a really good clean up. I've picked out the best parts I possibly can. Um, so we can make a really good one out of it and as you can see um, there it's playing Man Cave at the moment um, Man Cave were wrote and made um, it were wrote the coder was Chris Stanley uh, the music was done by Roy Winding and the graphics was done by Roy Winding um, Room Spans and David Erickson if I've got that right uh, Roy and Chris the coder and room spans we had on the show. So if you check the YouTube live streams, you'll see the um, Empire Strikes Back live stream with them three guys. Um, what, what, what a time we had on that. They're really, really nice guys. Uh, Rooms, uh, an award winning film director. Um, Roy does a lot of music on, on the Commodore 64. And Chris, well, he's a top guy. He does a lot of coding, 
He's a scuba diver like me. <laughs> and he's into vintage cars, which I was at all at one time. Not so much these days, but I was. And I still like the vintage cars. So that says Space Helmet. What do you think? So there you go, we've got a space helmet and I've got another one that I can put in the garage to be fair. This one can go in the garage out of the way because I just I don't have any room in here and if you were to have a look around you'd see bits and pieces scattered everywhere. The games room is piling up with junk and I can't move. It's not junk, it's not junk, it's retro goodness. Um, but it is piling up and I don't want to put it in the garage in the damp area out there in the cold and wet and everything like that. You know what I mean. So we've got a space helmet. We've got a space helmet TV. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little episode. It's not been a big one this week. Um, we'll try and get a little bit more done next week for you guys. Um, so yeah. So once again, if you've enjoyed this channel, do me a favour. Do all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell for all the up and coming videos. Check out the description, we've got the Patreons there, the link for Patreon should I say. There's the link for the Facebook group if you want to come and chat to me. Um, there's all the links down below for the other YouTubers, which is the UK Retro Repairers. There should be a live stream as well, but it's on the Sunday 25th, I believe, this month. Um, so please make note on that one. And we're doing the live stream with the with the five members on. So if you enjoyed the other ones, make sure you check that out. So that's it for this week, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.